I'm talking to the serious students out there who want to make application of the principles that lead to the first deal. These are habits. And we're going to develop some great habits in the next four weeks. Tonight, we're kicking it off. I've never been more excited about anything that we've done so far. All right, let's jump right in. We are going to talk about generating lead for property deals, right? For these wholesale lease option deals, these virtual wholesale lease option deals, you've got to generate leads. I'm going to show you how to generate leads on demand, okay? And then we are going to be doing some role playing, okay? Not whips and chains, phone calls, all right? And text messages. We're going to be doing role play with talking to the seller leads that we generate next week. We're going to generate some leads next week, show you how to do that. And then we're going to introduce the conversation that you're going to be having with them. We are going to generate leads and then we are going to interact with those leads live on camera, talking with and texting with motivated sellers and homeowners that we have reached out to and they are coming back to us as leads. All right, so you can see we are hitting the majors here. We are absolutely crushing the majors here. In week one, we're gonna get you set up. Week two, we're gonna show you how to get leads and then we're gonna introduce the conversation you're going to have with those leads. So tonight, what I wanna do, the first order of business is I want to clear away all of the theory problems, okay? all of the theory problems now listen to me listen to me you, you got to trust me a little bit some of you out there have been through 2011 different courses and trainings and gurus and mentors and coaches and blah 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 ah right okay you've been through a lot of them i've been through a lot of them too it's time now to get very focused on a few specific skills that lead to checks. These are the skills, right, that these gurus don't really talk about too often in their courses. They will briefly go over some of these ideas and topics and they'll give you, they'll throw a script at you, but they none of them are actually role playing on camera with you most of the time. And most of the time, if they are role playing with you, they are definitely not doing live calls on a weekly monthly basis in front of you so you can learn that is what the real real estate wholesalers club is about is giving you the real deal okay and i said giving you the real deal <clears throat> i focus on single family residents I, I i focus on what i call the bread and butter lease options involve the bread and butter concept. I'm a little bit of a country boy, kind of. I've got lots of funny colloquialisms, I guess, I, that I would throw out there. Anyway, I don't, is that a word? Colloquial, colloquialism? Yes, the bread and butter theory. The bread and butter theory is, is that you're looking in lease options. And what I'm looking for is the three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. That's it, all right? If I'm, if I'm looking for a lease option, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. And the reason why I'm looking for that is, is because that's the house everybody wants, right? <laughs> you want to live in a three bedroom, two bath. I, I guarantee you, if you live in a two bedroom right now or a one bedroom, your ass wants to live in a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, right? And that is the standard. That's kind of the standard. So I know if I can get a single family residence that is three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, I can find a tenant buyer boom i can find a down payment boom i can find that kind of money right and i can find it easy street i can find it quick oh my goodness and with the cost of housing rising in in certain metropolitan areas in this country and and i'm living in one right now if you get a three bedroom two bath two car garage with a lease option Woo, you found gold. You found gold. You're going to make some money. I mean, you're going to make some good money, right? Leafa says, when is it not a scenario to buy on a lease option? That's a great question. Oh my goodness. I love this question. When is it not a scenario to buy on a lease option? 
you are going to want to not buy on a lease option. Number one, when the house is not livable. Okay. In other words, when it's just an ugly house and it's not a pretty enough house for people to want to live in. Because remember, you're wanting to find a tenant buyer. You're wanting to find a tenant buyer. So these people are going to want to live in this property, okay? So that is one major, in my, my experiences here, that is a no-no. I will not go into a lease option deal with a property that I feel like is not a good living situation for a tenant because that's what I'm going to be looking for. Do I want to be responsible for slumming out this crappy, crap-ass house, right, basically, and trying to find a tenant buyer for it? No. And another reason is because the tenant buyer, if he's got a brain in his head at all, he's going to say, hey, why, why would I give you this money as a upfront non-refundable fee when I could just put it into this house? I'll put it into this house for you because, you know, look at all this crap needs to be done to it. Yeah, just forget that. Bread and butter. Three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. That's bread and butter. Will I do a three bedroom, two bath, one car garage? Will I do a three bedroom, one and a half bath? Sure. Will I do a nice two bedroom, one and a half bath? Sure. Right. Another reason, another scenario where I would not do a lease option is when the homeowner's payment to their mortgage is more than the fair market rent. Okay. In other words, if they have a mortgage payment of a thousand dollars a month, but the something just made a sound at me, man, and I don't know what it is, but it sounds good. It sounded like a cool sound. If they have a thousand dollars a month mortgage payment and I can only rent that house out in that neighborhood for eight fifty, I'm not gonna do that then. It looks like oh, we got a couple subscribers. That's great, man. Thank you. So yeah, that's another reason why another scenario where I won't get involved in a lease option. Okay, it is if I can't if the rent is not the same at least or more than their mortgage payment, I gotta get out because I'm not gonna be able to find somebody to tenant buy that place and pay the thousand a month because that's only an eight fifty a month kind of deal. Alright, does that make sense? Don't forget if you got questions, post, ask us right here on the wall. Ask us right here on the wall. And when one of you gets a deal this month, I want to have a video testimonial from your ass. All right. Video testimony. That's my worst attempt at being mean. Okay. Love you guys. This was an example that we used. It is 1230 Apple Cartway. It doesn't even exist. I changed the address. But this is a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. Remember, that's our bread and butter, guys. This is bread and butter. This is what we're going for. This is just a quick refresher. These are the types of properties you're looking for. You're not looking for junkers, okay? You're not looking at ugly houses. You're looking at houses that are livable. In fact, if they are not livable, then they do not qualify for a wholesale lease option. Meaning, if a tenant cannot move right in and get to living there, it does not qualify for a very good wholesale lease option deal, virtual or otherwise. Bread and butter, guys, bread and butter. Hey, that's my mom watching. Hey, mom, good to see you. Bread and butter. It's three bedrooms, two baths. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Lorenzo. Good to see you guys. We still have people popping on. And my mom checked in on me. <laughs> I love you, mom. Yeah, the bread and butter houses, guys, don't try to force a property deal that's just not bread and butter. Okay? It's going to be harder for you to find a tenant buyer. That is the long and short of it. You're going to have a harder time finding a tenant buyer if you're not sticking to bread and butter houses or close to okay. if you get a property deal and you're like oh hey justin i'm real excited about this wholesale lease option deal i got it's a one bedroom one bath on and it's a, it's 600 square feet and i'm going to be like you've eliminated a lot of your buyer pool out there and not a lot of people are looking for a one bedroom one bath maybe in perhaps in some major metropolitan markets that would be desirable but as as it stands here in my market today and in the markets that I do this in, <laughs> one bedroom, one bath, not a lot of people trying to knock the doors down to get inside. Everybody wants that three bedroom, two car, three bedroom, two bath, two car garage. Everybody wants that. Everybody wants it. You and I want it. That's what we want to live in. I'm talking about properties that look nice. Okay. They don't look junky. They look like something like this. Okay. This is a nice property. 
and you can see this one's for rent there's a for rent sign this is an excellent property to target three bedrooms two baths it's livable a tenant can move right in they can make their life happen right there inside those walls without any labor and hard work going into it and those buyers would be willing okay two things i want you to notice about this one they'd be willing to put down money to live in a place like this and call it theirs yeah yeah they get a shot to try it out before they buy it out that's the story and they're going to try it out before they buy it out but they can call it theirs they can act like it's theirs we want them to act like it's theirs we want them to take ownership in this property deal so this is a pretty house you second thing i want you to notice is not only will a buyer be willing to put down money to live here which is your profits but he's also for rent uh, perfectly okay to contact landlords and ask them if they would consider your offer to do a wholesale lease option absolutely okay absolutely okay to do that these four rent properties are prime they're already ready to move in they're already tenant ready okay so it, it already fits the qualifications on that level if it's close to a three bedroom two bath if it's three bedroom one and a half bath one car garage okay yeah fine all right now this one here in particular this particular house happened to be a for rent and a lot of the best really a lot of the best wholesale lease option deals come from the for rent section of craigslist also for rent on zillow and other places online it's not you're not just limited to for sale by owners you can go into calling the for rents and landlords absolutely you should because those are going to be some of the best that you'll ever find out there those deals you're going to find some great deals that way all right we talked about getting your your target and your focus right how it becomes easier to find buyers tenant buyers when you're looking for bread and butter type deals instead of just whatever willy-nilly comes down the pike okay so i do want to take some time today and show you guys how i generate leads yep this is the pricing list right here okay zero bucks per month start generating leads using the automated rei and the craigslist scraper tool you can see i'm logged in here at the automated rei dashboard over to the left there's a vertical menu i can slide up and down this time i'm going to slide down to the craigslist scraping tab and i'm going to select that let's go ahead and name this campaign again today's date and let's do kansas city missouri now remember for the second option for scraping craigslist you'll want to select the request type submit craigslist url manually now that we've done that it's asking us to paste a url here we don't have one yet so let's go to craigslist you can see i'm on craigslist now and i'm in the kansas city missouri craigslist because that's where i want to do my scraping today once i'm on craigslist in the market that i want to be in i'm going to find the housing section and once I find the housing section, I'm going to go ahead and select real estate for sale. I could select apartments and housing for rent if I'm looking for rental properties, but today I'm looking for sale by owners. So I'm going to select real estate for sale. Now up here at the top, there are three drop down menus. One says Kansas City, the second says housing, and the third says real estate for sale. I can select this one and it'll drop down more options for me now i can select real estate for sale by owner not just real estate for sale which would include both by owner by agent by broker and by anyone else real estate by owner and specific now i can get very specific here and let me show you a gold nugget and these are the type kind of tips that we talk about in the business plan of the automated rei where you receive six live q a sessions each week you can access those and ask these kind of questions and we share these kind of tips but i'm going to show you a secret ninja tip for working with craigslist and the automated rei craigslist scraper first of all i want to refine my list down to something very specific so that i know that i'm not wasting any time any money and i'm reaching the exact people that i want to reach right now i'm looking at real estate by owner these are properties that are for sale by the owner now there are 726 that it has pulled up let's get more specific i can hit the minus button and type in 
realtor. What this will do is this will remove any listings that include the word realtor. I can minus and then say management. This will remove any listings that have the phrase management or property management company. I can hit the minus button and I can subtract any listings that include the word realty. I can, even though these are for sale by owners, right? It's a gold nugget tip. I can hit the minus button and I can remove any properties that have, what's another good one? Agent. Okay. Let's say there's something that I want it to include, not exclude. So far we're excluding realtor, property management, realty, agents. Let's also exclude manager, but let's try including, it must include fixer upper. Okay. Now, if I hit the search button, it will pull up listings that do not, that are for sale by owner, that do not include the words realtor, management, realty, agent, or manager. And they also must include the words fixer upper. Now I'll hit search. There are 44 listings on Kansas City, Missouri Craigslist for properties that fit this exact criteria. If this is the list that I'm looking for, I'm going to go to the browser address bar, highlight that. I'm going to click and copy the domain. It's really long and ugly, but as soon as I have it copied, I'm going to go back to the automated RI and I'm going to paste it right here. You can do that by right clicking and then selecting paste or use control V. Now, once I've done that, I can click the green, the blue button, check data count. And you can see it says there's 44 listings that it scraped off of that domain for a $1.32 charge. Now, if I go back to the Craigslist, you can see there is 44. So it is scraped this exact page of this exact list of these properties for sale by owner. Once I've done that, I can click proceed. Once I click proceed, it will create down here these words. Now you can create campaign. In order to make my campaign start, I need to click the big green button, create campaign. Let's do that now. Now it pops up here, it says campaign created sex successfully, please check in campaign history. So if I slide on the left down to the scraping history and I select that, it will pull up right here, number one, Kansas City, Missouri Craigslist, the time and day that we ran that, and it'll say scheduled until the scraping is completed and then it will say completed. That is how you use the automated REI to create leads using the Craigslist scraper tool in two different methods. Now, the next video, we will talk about sending an SMS blast to those scraped leads off of Craigslist using the start SMS button, which will become available to us as soon as this scraping is complete. You'll notice I'm logged in to the automated REI dashboard over here to the left with a vertical menu, I'm gonna slide down all the way to the bottom and I'm gonna select TCPA compliance. Now, in order to do this, I will have had to have either run a scrape on Craigslist or on Zillow with either the Zillow scraping tool or the Craigslist scraping tool so that I have something to text. Or I could upload a, a list here and I'll show you that in a moment. But first of all, let's name our test TCPA compliance text campaign right now. All right, I'm gonna name it VIP test compliance campaign. And again, I'm going to use the select campaign option and I'm going to choose a scrape that we just did. If I wanted to upload a list instead of choosing a campaign that I had previously scraped, all I would have to do is format the spreadsheet according to this sample here and you can download that and take a look at it pretty easily. And then simply just click the upload list button and select your file and click done. Okay, that's how easy it is to upload a list. But we're going to go ahead and use the select campaign option and select a scraping campaign that I had just previously done in Phoenix, Arizona. In fact, I think yesterday. Below that, it's going to give me the option to select a voice record. This is my inbound voicemail greeting. This is what leads will hear if they choose to call me back instead of text me back. 
So I'm going to select a voicemail greeting right here that is appropriate for this particular campaign. Okay, now here we go. Let's slide down a little bit further. If you don't have a phone number to text from, you can buy one here. They're very inexpensive. And if you have bought some, you can select them here. I'm going to go ahead and select this one, 859-203-1898. And then I'm going to write my message in this box. Now I'm going to click send now. And you can see it automatically pulled up a box that we created a campaign successfully, all right? I have also sent this message now to one phone number, and now it is set up for me to send it to number two of 56 numbers. If I don't wanna send it to this for some reason, all I have to do is hit skip, and I can skip through as many as I wish, and I can send as many as I wish. You That's can schedule you when you want to do the scrape. Now, it's gonna take 24 hours anyway, and then you can schedule when you wanna do the text blast. So you want to do a text blast on the scrape that you made, and you want to do it when you're ready to respond to some of those responses, the yes, no's, and maybes. Don't do it and then ignore these people. That's what I'm getting at, okay? Don't do it and then ignore these people. That's not fun. All right, guys, do we have any questions about wholesaling lease options virtually? Do we have any questions about the automated REI and how to produce leads? Mike says, what do I need to have in place to do deals in other parts of the country? Really nothing, man. There's nothing special about it. You can do this deal. You can do the same deal in your own market that you do in any other market in the United States. There are some special nuances. Ryan Webb's got a question. He says, does the upfront non-refundable option fee, the example that, that your tenant buyer would be bringing, does it cost, let's say if it's $10,000, does it come off the full asking price? Yes. Yes. So you're going to want to raise that full asking price. In other words, if you buy it from your contract with the seller says 100,000, Ryan, you're going to want to mark up to 110,000. And then you're going to want to have that 10,000 come off. Then now, you've basically structured that profit in there for yourself. Now, the question then next is how I would guess logically a logical person would say, yeah, but then how do I know how much money that person is going to be bringing? So how do I know how much to raise it up there? Okay. Then raise it to 110. And then if you get a cat that comes in and he's got six K down instead of 10, then, you know, lower the price for him and make it work. Take your six K and run, make it 106 instead of 110. All right. Does that make sense? I hope so. Clint's talking about boots on the ground. Yeah. I love boots on the ground. And Mike says, who puts the sign in the yard? Who shows property if owner can't? Yeah, you're talking about doing a virtual a wholesale lease option out of state. Who shows the property if the owner can't? Yep. You mean if the house is vacant and there's no one living there and the let's say the owner is also out of state? Yep. Then what you have to do, Mike, is you have to call. You can use the automated REI, actually, that I just showed you, and you can scrape for realtors. And then you ask realtors if there's one around who would be willing to help you out and do some paperwork and show a property for you for a flat rate fee of 250 bucks or something like that when you close or 500 bucks when you close and bada bing bada boom you've got boots on the ground okay janet franklin how can you wholesale in another state yeah we were just talking about that janet it works just exactly the same way so use the automated rei go into a completely different metropolitan area a different city Go right over there, pull leads, pull, scrape for leads, then do a text blast, and then get on the phone and respond to the ones that are yeses and maybes. And then what you're going to do is you're going to advertise for a buyer. And the homeowner is going to show the property for you, or you're going to get a realtor to show it for you. That's that simple. Yep. You guys are thinking up some pretty complicated ideas. These things are really, they move, typically they move along much smoother in, in real life. Okay, you guys are imagining all the scenarios where the where there's the owner can't show the property and the and maybe there's not a realtor in town who'd be willing to help and then they lost the front door key and then oh my god it's really guys everybody's motivated to get this deal done you tip when you're dealing with the right people you're dealing with motivated sellers everybody wants to get this deal done man they're willing to figure out a way to get this house shown if you're gonna be bringing people yeah. And I don't mean bringing them personally or sending people. Yeah, don't. I'm just trying to encourage you to not outthink yourself here, guys. Don't double think yourself. It works the same way in other markets as it does right here in your home market. I do it right here in my home market, too. And I rarely go see these places or do any of that. It's all 
you can do virtual stuff where you live like i don't even leave my house okay are there any other questions you guys have got some great questions popping in here these are really good questions thanks guys i really i'm glad that you're asking your what is it inquiring minds want to know and you definitely want to know and that's the first that's the first step is learning getting some confidence we're asking them to let us solve a problem for them and we're not creating a risk situation for them either okay we're not creating a risk situation for you and we're not creating a risk situation for them okay so let's let's not keep ourselves in in and what and i don't mean this to sound rude but let's not keep ourselves in ignorance let's understand it and let's find out what what we're what our objective is here we're not asking them to sell our, their firstborn we're just trying to solve a problem for them and this is how much commitment level they need and be honest with you it ain't much it ain't much so get in there get that confidence level you need built up go to the automated rei and check it out go ahead and sign up and put some money in the wallet and start testing around on doing some scrapes in the market area that you want to do because this is how you do this in a matter of a few hours you can put a deal together from start to finish in six seven eight hours maybe 10 if you're brand new okay this is how you do it instead of weeks and months okay now the automated rei is an integral integral part of that integral <laughs> i don't even know what that means anyway wants to know if she can talk to me about the mentoring yeah i don't know why not yeah i'm available to talk about that i'm all about one-on-one -on -one mentoring if i can help folks out let's get her done let's do it i want to help that's what it's all about helping each other nobody gets rich in this business alone we're going to be actually doing text blasts on a scrape that we pulled i'm going to actually do a text blast and we're going to interact with some of them right here on camera it's going to be great so anyway we are looking at the sms campaign history details i pulled up a sms blast that we had sent out and what happens is they return texts to the text that i sent out and those texts that they send back to me are populated on a spreadsheet you can see some of them haven't returned a text to me at least not yet so you'll want to give it some time for people to respond but you can see here's some popping up right here this one yeah that didn't look like a winner it says thank you so much sorry not interested blah 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 on down okay yep i wouldn't consider anything under one year you know what man i would definitely call that guy back I would definitely make a conversation with that cat. He didn't say no. He didn't say maybe, but he said he would consider something if it was over a year. So I'm just scrolling down. Here's a flat out no. Okay. That happens, guys. All right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Is that another no? Okay. Yeah. It happens. You're not going to, hey man, if everybody said yes, wouldn't everybody be doing this? It'd be like running a slot machine. You know, that like you, you had all, you always had cherry. Well, that's just the way it goes. So yeah, you're going to look here and look at all these wonderful cold calls that you're not going to have to make. That's really the point you probably should be catching here that I didn't say is look at all these cold calls you're not going to have to make, right? Look at all these no's that you're not going to have. Rape your ear hole. All right, here's a yes. I found a yes. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. It doesn't get any more simple than that. <laughs> would you consider leasing to a strong tenant for 24, 36 months, then selling at your asking price? Or I could say it like Raphael, if I signed a two-year lease, would you consider selling to me at that time? yes i would okay i'm definitely calling this guy back now i could start a conversation here with this button but what i'm going to do is i'm going to text okay I'm going to text him so let's do that let's do that right now let's do that right now i'm going to text him and here's what i'm going to say because i'm going to move it off of the machine and i'm going to move it over here to, to my office phone okay i'm going to say hi this is justin we were just chatting about renting your property for 24 months and i switched phones from my office phone to my personal phone to continue the conversation something like that okay i'm gonna shoot that out there to, to him or her whoever it is all right does that make sense so that way i'm not paying for extra texts hello hello i'm not paying for extra texts see because you get charged for every text that goes out and every text that comes in so i'm moving it over to okay i got a text back from this guy already yeah all right we're moving and shaking let me see let me text him back could would this see he already said yes why would this be surprising it shouldn't be he already said yes on the text would you be able to speak right now we'll just see what he says guys 
We'll see what he says. Definitely. Isn't it nerve-wracking? Isn't it exciting? It's exciting. We just want to see what's up with this. Okay. I'm going to see if I can put him on speakerphone and everybody can hear it. We'll just see what happens. Oh, I got to get my paperwork pulled up. I got to get my got to get my property paperwork pulled up. Okay, I got my Yep, I got it. I got it right here. I got my lead property information sheet, the one with the black stars on it. Okay. I'm going to call this guy. Are you guys nervous or what? Are you guys nervous? I'm the one doing it. Guys, it's okay to be nervous. It's okay to be scared. I was telling you earlier today or yesterday on the Facebook group that I definitely still get butterflies. I sat at a kitchen table yesterday late afternoon and closed the deal. And uh, man, I get, I, I've been doing this, guys, since I was about probably 20, 20 years old. Right now, 23, 25 years old. Yeah, and then I'm 42 now. And I still get butterflies, man. I still get nervous. Why? Because it's exciting. I don't know. I get almost like I get a little shaky too. It's okay. It's, I think you're supposed to. I think I really think you're supposed to. Don't feel too bad about it. So I think the important part to, to take out of this is to just man up, just lady up, call up, be yourself, follow the script. You can't make them be more motivated than they are. You need to just let it be what it is. So I don't know what this phone call is going to be. It might be good. It might be bad. I really don't know. But let's give it a whirl. Okay? Let's do it. On this is Mike. Hello, Mike. This is Justin. I've been texting you back and forth a little bit about your property. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm driving right now, but go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem, man. I didn't really want to talk about anything too deep I just wanted to chat with you for a couple minutes and find out a little bit more about the property and uh, maybe a little bit about your situation and, and at any rate if this is a good time to chat I would love to just ask you a few questions can you tell me a little bit about the place I got I got four or five minutes okay no problem uh, man. I got a few properties what are you talking about we had initially asked you the question about would you consider a strong tenant for 24 to 36 months and then selling outright for, oh, for so it's yeah, yeah, one of your rentals that were was on Zillow or Craigslist. I don't remember exactly which one. Yeah, I've been on Zillow. Zillow, yeah. That, that property is a starter home, probably 1,300 square feet. I got it's all vinyl. I bought it. I bought it right. Did a little fix up on it, and then I've been renting it for the last few years. It would make a great unit for somebody. Yeah. I could probably sell it right now for around probably 145. I, I see. Only owe, I only owe probably less than 75 on it. I see. Okay. So is this something that you would consider renting out for the period of time and then well, selling I mean, at that point? I'm looking for a tenant now, but right. tell me about what your offer is. Okay. Yeah. Basically what we do is we work with folks that have a hard time qualifying for home loans. Now that comes in a variety of different situations and scenarios, but these are good people that have jobs. They have income. They have stability. What's the difference between that and my renter? Really, probably nothing, except we really do put these folks through a bit of a pre-screening process. I'm not sure what kind of pre-screening process you use. Prob probably something similar. We also do a pre-screening process on these tenants, and we make sure that they're not just looking to rent, but that they actually want to buy. So it gives them an opportunity to rent a place for a couple, two, three years and then qualify for that home. During that period of time, they're working on their credit. They're getting some questions answered. They're working on getting a credit card paid down or some medical bills or what have you. But they are on the road to home loan qualification. They just need a little bit of time to rent right off of the bats. That's really what we do. We work with those folks. Yeah. Yes, we are working with folks that want to buy a home, and in order to do that, they need to be able to rent that home that they're buying for a little while. It helps them with the home loan qualification process. Does that make well, what sense? If they, what if they tear my place up? I don't know you or what yeah. well, you're bringing in. Do I get to meet these people? How does it work? Yeah, that's a great question, Mike. And the answer to that is, is they're good people. They want to be homeowners, so they are not really of the mindset to destroy a property however it's the same scenario as if you were renting the property out to one of your tenants now it's the same process same scenario nothing's different about that it's a bad deal if it were to happen 
the likelihood of it happening is not very strong. Well, with it's our, less likely with you than it is with one of my own tenants. I, I would say definitely because these folks, again, want to be homeowners. They are willing to take on a lot of the homeowner type maintenance as well during the renting period. So that kind of alleviates some of that from you. We want them to step into acting like homeowners right away. And a part of that is fixing the commode and changing the filters in the dishwasher or whatever it is. What's your name? My name's Justin. My name's Justin. It's Justin Chamness. So I would love to actually, Mike, I've got quite a bit of information here just from chatting with you and I know you said you had to run. What I'd like to do is just do a little bit of looking into the property address. Can you give that to me one, one more time? What's the address, man? Just give me the street and the, uh, just give me the street and the house number. 136. Okay. Maple Court. Okay. Okay, 136 Maple Court, gotcha. I know exactly right where you're talking about. Okay, I want to do a little bit of a look into it as well, a little bit further, but would you be up for chatting again about this and, and going from there? Yeah, Justin, just real, what's it going to cost me? What are you charging me yeah. here? Not going to cost you anything no, at all. to do business with you. Mike, it won't cost you a thing because we are we make our profits, we make our money from the buyers. Okay, so they are paying us for this service to help them connect with a homeowner that will help them become homeowners. And so that they are paying us. It won't cost you any money whatsoever. I think that's good news, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah, that's, that'll work. Yeah, just, just give me a call. Okay, I'll Mike. All right, we'll be back with you soon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man. All see right. you. All right, bye-bye. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Right? Yeah. Guys, that actually sounded pretty good. That cat there, he seemed, see, he wasn't fighting me on nothing, was he? He wasn't fighting me. Now, I'm going to go check out rental meter. I'm going to go check out that property address. I'm going to make sure it's close to bread and butter. I'm going to make sure that's something I can do. Then I'm going to I'm gonna get that packet, that seller leave behind. I'm going to get that in front of him. I'm going to make sure that he sees that. And I'm also going to make sure that I answer any questions he has, any objections he has. I'm going to get that little lease option agreement memo signed could it fall away and could it fall away and die yeah it could guys that's why you don't just you're not putting all your eggs in one basket you want to find you a half a dozen of those cats to be talking to every week that's it that's it that's gonna cost you you know nothing ryan webb says what's up r dub Woo! r dub man that's cool that's a cool name i wish i had a cool name like that all right guys are there any questions next week we are talking about finding a tenant buyer how do we find a tenant buyer? How do we go about getting it done? And you know what? You guys can get it done. You can do it. It's real easy. If you guys are finding the bread and butter stuff and you're talking to your sellers like that and they're getting to know you a little bit. Yeah, that's crazy cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah that's right, man. You're one of my killers. One of my wholesale lease option warriors. One of my wholesale lease option warriors. I love that. I've got bank owned wholesaling killers and wholesale lease option warriors. Yeah. Yeah, that guy wasn't upside down, Kelly said. Yeah, see, he threw my game off a little bit there for a second when he said what he thought the property was worth and he was like, I only owe 70,000 on it. I was like, oh, okay, this is not, this is not a slam dunk. That's really what I was thinking right away. And then I got to thinking that it might work out anyway. Let me just keep talking to him. And you never know, guys, that's how it works. I got another question in the chat. It says, why not tell the guy that the tenant takes full responsibility for damages? In, in reality, that is true. That guy will be able to hold the tenant responsible for the damages, but also he and I both already know that tenant, if he tears up that house, he ain't gonna be able to collect a darn thing out of that guy, okay? He's not going to be able to do it. Not going to be able to do it. Yeah, see, it would have been, an, it would have maybe, the margins and the percentages and the dollar figures and stuff, Ryan, it really would have worked out for a wholesale ugly house deal, except it wasn't an ugly house. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It was a nice house. It's a nice house. Somebody can live there. He said it's been a part of a investment package of houses that he has. He, this guy's been around a bit. You got to think about that, too. And I'll tell you what, you can do these deals all the time with landlords. Those are other investors. Landlords are investors, too. And they don't mind this strategy. Now, some of them have caught on and are doing this strategy for themselves. And uh, I've never found joint venturing on wholesale lease options to be very good for me. So I'm looking for the investors, the landlords, the tired landlords, right? Yeah, the tired landlords, the guys that are like, hey, I'm just, I'm done. I'm ready to get out. Those guys are great to work with too. Sometimes you can even pick up ugly houses from them. Do I take over the mortgage? That's a question in the chat. No, don't take over the mortgage. 
it's a lease, okay? I might offer to make the payment, if it's the same as the mortgage payment exactly, I might offer to make that payment for the homeowner in the portal or have the buyer do that, my tenant buyer. See, this is the wholesale lease options, guys. I'm not taking over anything. I'm getting the heck out of here. I'm getting the heck out of here. I don't want to be in the middle. I'm getting out. I'm a wholesale lease options guy. So I'm wholesaling. I'm assigning this off to my tenant buyer. And I'm letting the seller know right away in that agreement, seller agreement memo that I showed you. Yeah. I'm letting him know right there that's exactly what I'm up to. So you can see everything's real transparent and clear here, guys. There's nothing hidden, nothing shady here. Here's another question. So you make money on the down payment and cash flow if possible. Okay, if this were a sandwich lease and I was staying as meat in the middle, I would make cash flow if possible. But I'm not making cash flow because I'm not staying in the middle. I'm assigning this deal to my tenant buyer. That's why we're calling it wholesale lease options. So therefore, Billy, I'm only making money on the option fee deposit. Okay, you got to watch calling it a down payment because it may not be considered a down payment when they go to, to get a loan. You don't know what that loan officer is going to call a down payment what he's not. And in fact, you don't even know what loan officer they're going to. So you can't really call it a down payment. You want to call it an option deposit. What I like to call it is, hey, this is your pay to play fee. This is your pay to play fee, guys. You guys can pay the fee to get in this house and play around in it like it's yours until you can make it yours. That's it, right? That's, I, I think that's just more hip. Yeah, that's, that's what we're talking about today. Wholesale lease options. We're talking about finding a tenant buyer. So let's get right into that and let's talk about finding a tenant buyer. Saturday morning, shut up money. That's that money where you tell, hey, you tell yourself and you tell anybody else that's who in your dreams, you tell them, hey, listen, you can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. I already got my shut up money. I already got it. I know it works. Are you crazy? I got my shut up money. I got it. All right, guys, so we're about to show you how to find a tenant buyer with cash to, to pay, to play, all right? Real simple techniques. There's two techniques I want to show you today. There's a third one that I really want to, I did show you the buddy brother. There is something here that I want to mention that I won't show you how to do because I feel like probably most of us could figure it out on our own. But Craigslist, listing your new found wholesale lease option property deal in the for rent section or the for sale by owner section of Craigslist is a tremendous way to drive traffic tremendous way to drive traffic i've got lots and 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 lots guys lots of people will call you they will message you they will email you off of a craigslist ad all right guys yeah if you're over here on facebook you can see i'm on my facebook right now and all you got to do is check into the create button and you can see marketplace listing down here you can create a lot of different things but you can create a marketplace listing and if you guys have never been to facebook marketplace you're nuts Look at that. There's a house right there. Somebody's selling a house. Look, if you click the sell something button over on the left, this is what pops up. Sell an item, sell a car, sell a house or a piece of property. Yeah. Yeah, so here you go. Now, when you click sell a piece of property, it pops up like this. And guess what, guys? Durr. Fill in the blanks, eh? That's all we got to do is fill in the blanks, man. What if you don't know the answers? They're real simple questions, guys. This is not a test, and I think that you would pass if it was. Put some pictures up in there. Just go around here. Look, don't sweat it. Hey, don't let your eyeballs cross. Just take a breath. Look at this. Okay, just fill in the blanks. I'm just making up some stuff. Just as an example, this is the market. Guys, I have sold more deals on Marketplace for free than I can shake a stick at. Okay? That's the facts. Yeah, fill in the blanks. How hard is that? Now, I'm going to give you a little tip here. I'm going to give you some pointers here. Now, use some wording like this. Okay, it asks you what the rental price is. I put that in there. I say lease in the description right away. I say lease with option to purchase. Reasonable down payment required. All right? So now that everybody sees this, they know. They already know. Okay? So there's no hiding that they're going to have to have some money. All right? And that's really what you're wanting to go for. You're not looking for a tenant. You're looking for a tenant with a handful of cash. So put some wording in there like that, okay? Good credit, bad credit, no credit, okay, it doesn't matter. They can own that house in 24, 36 months. All right, I'm going to finish filling in the blanks. It's real simple here. I'm going to make up an address and, oh, look, something in Ferguson, Missouri popped up. How funny. I have no idea. Evidently, there's a test street in Ferguson, Missouri. Yeah, it ain't New York City. I, see, I threw a picture up there. Guys, 50 photos. 
might as well put as many photos up there as you can. Where do we get photos if it's a virtual? You ask the seller. Hey, take some pictures and send them to me. Okay, thousand square feet. I made that up. I'm making up all this, but look how detailed you can get. Just right here, it's real simple. It's a no-brainer. Cat friendly, dog friendly, whatever. Post, okay? Post this. Now you see, here's the post I just made. Now look at this button. Post in more places. Look, click this thing. Now every group that I have joined, it will pull up here and it'll ask me if I want to share it to that group. Automatically. All of them at the same damn time. Right? <laughs> at the same damn time. <laughs> at the same damn time. Okay. Get it. Get some. All right. Here's the list. Here's the list. All right. You can take a look at it. This is what it looks like when somebody else sees it. Look how pretty that is. Look how nice of a job Facebook did for you. They did great for you. They built a nice listing here for you. All you had to do was fill in the old blanks. There's always a blank that needs filled in somewhere, ain't there? Right here, there's a bunch of them. Fill them in. Get crack a lacking on that. And I'll tell you what, they will be, people will be messaging your butt, and they will be asking you about that, and they'll be saying, how much down? And your first question is, is, well, have you driven by the house? Have you seen the house? Are you interested in it? Yep, there is a pay-to-play fee if you want to be a rent-to-owner, and that's what this is. How much money are you working with as far as the down payment goes? That's what I would be asking them. Yes, sir, Bob. So they'll be hitting you up off this ad. And you know how much that costs? You saw me put my credit card number in there, didn't you? Nope. Free. Guys, I'm like the tightest ass guy around. I don't like spending money on stuff except fun things and what I want. And I find all kinds of free ways to do shit, man. I'll just be real with you. I don't like spending money. Now you could come over here to the create buttons and you could click add. The first time we clicked marketplace listing. This time we're clicking add and you can see it will pull up a Facebook ads dashboard. And man, my dog is just all over me right now. Go lay down. What in the world do you want for crying out loud? I feed you. You just, all you do is eat your, all you do is lick yourself and eat my food. Get out of here. No, I love my dog. My dog's amazing. All right, guys, that's how you do it. You just follow the instructions there with the Facebook ads. But the two free places that you need to be posting these property deals that you get, Craigslist. It's free. Number two, you need to be doing it on the Facebook Marketplace. It's free. It's absolutely free. There is nothing in it whatsoever that will cost you money. Now, get response does cost a little money. It's worth it. Very much worth it. Also, paid ads on Facebook are very worth it. If you try the two free, okay, let me just break it down for you. So you, here's what I do. I get a lease, op, lease option wholesale deal under contract with a homeowner, landlord, seller, what have you. Then uh, with the pictures and the information, I'll build a Craigslist ad for free. That usually does the trick. I will at the same time build a free ad on Facebook Marketplace. That also usually does the trick, free. If after a day or two, I'm not getting very many responses, I will move to get response or direct to Facebook ad dashboard and I will build a paid ad for $5 a day. That's it, five bucks, $5 a day. Now, you're not gonna have to run it for 30 days. You're not gonna have to run it for six years. If you can run, hey Janet, good to see you here. Hey Jim, good to see you. If you run a Facebook paid ad, it's five bucks a day minimum, okay? That's what they charge you minimum, five bucks a day. That's what you have to be willing to invest, okay? You can set it up very specifically. I will set up a paid ad. Sometimes I'll just go back and boost the marketplace listing that I made. Yep. Which, what's boost mean? It means I'm making it a paid ad. It's, I'm paying a little money to have them boost that thing out there. And I'll set the audience to be, get this guys, this is a big one. Listen to this. When I do a paid ad on Facebook with a rental property like this, a, lease, a wholesale lease option, what I do is, is I target the zip code the property is in. Anybody over age of 18, up to 65, they will have an ad on their Facebook wall in their news feeds that is this property deal. And they will have been exposed to everything that I am trying to sell off right now with this property deal. Paid ads, they also work. So I try the free stuff first, I give it a day or two, if nothing big is moving for me, then I'll move to a paid ad and I'll do that for two, three, four, five days. I'll spend 20, 25 bucks tops. I can't tell you how many property deals I have sold for less than 20 or $25 on a Facebook paid ad 
with the audience niche being the same zip code, the people in the same zip code as the population itself. Yes, we don't want to waste any more of that precious time now, do we? I think that's something special about my generation X. I think we're the first generation in a while that's been like, hey, work? What? All right, I get that I have to, but where's this freedom shit everybody keeps talking about? That's what I'm talking about, and that's what I want. I don't like going and telling a boss, oh, hey, boss, Mr. Boss Man, hey, I'd like to go see my family, my relatives, they live a long way off, and I'd like to, I'd like to go see them. I try to go see them one time in every year of 365.25 days. Can I please, Mr. Boss Man, can I please go see my family? Oh, uh, gosh, it makes my stomach feel I get it. I'm just like you. I feel the same ways about all kinds of stuff. I have the same kind of battles and struggles that many of you have. Like I said earlier, I've got child support payments and mortgages and car creditors and business bills and man, shit. You think I figured it all out? I ain't figured it all out. I'm just trying to tell you how to wholesale real estate. That's it. I love you because I see myself in you. And I know you watch me, maybe, because you see a little bit of you in me. There's something there that kind of connects us together a little bit. and makes it worth spending a few minutes watching makes it worth spending a few minutes communicating to you telling you hey listen man i'm not special i this shit's so simple man the gurus and people they make it so complicated sounding and honestly man i do too really that's why the it's not complicated but there's a lot of little details on how to do this and that and where do i go for this and where do i go for that you can watch videos until the cows come home and still not have all the answers you can have a coach i'd be your coach i'll help you I had a guy ask me last night, he was talking about doing the coaching, he said, hey, are you still serious about that? Would you really do that? Justin, would you get on three-way calls with me as a coach? Would you get on three-way calls with me and buyers and sellers until I can get confident enough to do it myself? Are you kidding me, man? I'd love to. I know I'm just sitting here quiet, but I was just thinking for a minute, and I was just feeling, I was visualizing how good things are. Now, not, nothing's perfect, but there's never been a more perfect opportunity. And there's never been a better time. Now, what I want to know is, are you going to let procrastination and laziness? Somebody told me one time, they said, listen, the weight of discipline, doing something consistently, the weight of discipline is far lighter than the weight of regret. I think it was said like this, actually. The weight of regret is by far heavier than the weight of discipline. Guys, if I can do it, you can do it. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it with the tools that exist nowadays. If there's anybody, if there's anything, if there's any situation keeping you back from this, then it's happening right here because it's super duper simple. In fact, it's so simple, damn near everybody already knows how to do it. They're just not doing it. You got to win this fight right here, guys. You got to win this battle right here. You got to get rid of them evil. You got to get rid of that evil damn image in your mind of you being a failure unless that's the person you want to be. Fight it! Be the master of something. Be the master of your own mind. As I've said before in the great words of In Vogue, free your mind and the rest...